Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, we started taking an in-depth look at the 3D Kia in the Flame products. In this video, we will look at three additional functions you can use in the 3D Kia to refine the mat. Remember we are only focusing on pulling a key and not other aspects such as colour suppression, light wrapping or compositing. That is something you can do on your own after using the 3D Kia. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you are watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your internet browser. Picking up from where we left off in the previous video, we have keyed the image, set a noise sample and adjusted the softness. What we have so far is actually not that bad, but it can be tweaked. So let's start off with the first refinement. This is called Virtual Point Scaling. To explain this, let's take a close look at the RGB viewer and its softness element. In the previous video, we took samples of pixels to form the softness. This translated into a 3D element displayed in the RGB viewer. This 3D element is a rounded off representation of the actual softness 3D geometry. To see the proper softness element, change the convex hull pull down menu to vertices and surfaces. So the softness 3D element is built from vertices and surfaces. This is important to know because as you do virtual point scaling, you are grabbing vertices and pulling them to change the shape of the softness element. Please note that the convex hull does not need to be visible to make the adjustments. I just want to make sure that you see it's changing. Now with the RGB viewer, there are a lot of elements that can be selected and tweaked. So to lock it down to a specific element, you use the Picking pull-down menu. Set the pull-down menu to Softness. Now there are two methods to do virtual point scaling adjustments, on screen or in the RGB viewer. To manipulate the mat on screen, hold V and click the area you wish to tweak. As you click and drag, the on screen image changes. And if you look at the RGB viewer, you can see that the sampled area on the convex hull is being adjusted in the direction of an arrow. The arrow element is based on the image sample when you click down with the V hotkey. The second method to adjust the virtual point scaling is in the RGB viewer. When you click and drag on the softness convex hull, the arrow will align itself to the cursor. So if you had the colour histogram visible, you align the arrow with a specific colour range and pull the vertices to adjust the softness element. Try it by all means, but it's much easier to sample the specific range in the image and then adjust the convex hull. Click the plot button or press the O hotkey. Sample an area where the softness needs refinement. In the RGB viewer, a dotted box appears indicating the plotted sample and the arrow aligns to it. If the arrow is not clearly visible, I recommend rotating the RGB viewer with the control hotkey. Hold V and drag in the RGB viewer. The vertex along the arrow will be scaled to either increase or decrease the softness in the plotted area. You can obviously do this as many times as you want to refine a difficult key. As a tip, if you hold V and drag on the image, the plotted region is resampled at the cursor's position. However, if you want to lock to a plotted point and make adjustments directly on the image, hold Control V and drag on the image. To confirm this, the arrow will stay locked to the same place in the RGB viewer. Let's look at the second function to refine a mat in the 3D Kia. When working on the mat, you may need to oversample or undersample your image to get the most detail out of the mat. This can leave you with black or white regions that need cleaning up. For example, I want to remove any excess grey in the black areas of the mat. You can do this with patches. Set the sampling pull down to patch 1. Under the patches heading, make patch 1 active. Now hold CONTROL and sample the region. The region goes white. 
you can use this to fill holes in a mat. Or you can set the colour to zero that is black. There are also softness and opacity sliders to refine the patch. However, the patch is also represented in the RGB viewer. Switch the picking pull down to patch 1. So only patch 1 can be manipulated. Hold V and drag the arrow to increase or decrease the range of patch 1. Please note that with all the elements, you can invert the arrowhead and drag it in the opposite direction. Lastly, you have a maximum of 3 patches per 3D keyer. Hopefully this will be enough to clean up the mat. Now all the element refinements have been more or less pulling vertices in specific directions. However, the last refinement function is moving the whole element along the plotted point. This allows you to shift any element to a different range within the colour histogram. Let's use softness again as the example. Switch the sampling and picking pull down menus to softness. Click the plot button and sample the hair of the model. The arrow aligns itself to the plotted point in the RGB viewer. Now there are a variety of hotkeys to manipulate the element in specific ways. When you hold the 6 hotkey and drag, the softness element will move in line with the arrow. When you hold the 7 hotkey and drag the element, it will rotate on its centre axis. When you hold the 8 hotkey and drag the element, it will enable proportional scaling from the centre of the softness element. This is the same as dragging the softness proportional slider. However, when you hold the 9 hotkey and drag the element, it scales non-proportionately from the centre of the softness element. The scaling direction is locked to the line of the plotted sample. And finally, when you hold the 0 hotkey and drag the element, it will also scale non-proportionately. But this time, the scaling will be from the base of the arrow and not the centre of the element. So with all these refinements, you can patch the mat, pull any element's vertices, as well as move any element precisely within the RGB viewer. I'll go back to batch and look at the composite of what has been achieved so far. Hopefully these extra elements will help you deal with challenging keys. To finish off this video, I have another flow graph that I made earlier, showing the 3D keyer in action with all the various tools to complete the key and give a great looking result. I hope you've enjoyed these videos on the 3D keyer. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.